Hello, Steve White, Trek Boy 89 for Steve Arts 89, Star Trek's Alleged Gatekeeper. Now, I've already done this video once, but I'm trying to do a shorter, more simplified version. Now, I heard recently that there was an article on Fox News about Star Trek. I didn't want to deal with it because I didn't want to, like, give them a view because I thought it was a video of Tucker Carlson talking about it or something. But it was actually a written article written by a guy called David Marcus. Now, fortunately for me, um, Jessie Jenner did a video about it, so I thought, fine, I'll watch her video and then, you know, she can do the homework for me and I'll just do a video on that. So I was watching it and I found it really fascinating to see someone who's very left-wing with a very left-wing view of Star Trek taking on someone with a very, who's very right-wing with a very right-wing view of Star Trek. I found it really fascinating. Now, um... His argument basically was that Star Trek was dealing with current day politics and bringing today's politics into Star Trek's future, which um, was ruining it for people because they couldn't enjoy it because, you know, they were being forced to deal with politics and left-wing politics particularly. Um, now, she... he had two points, and she takes them on. Uh, one point was, of course, the Stacey Abrams cameo, and the other was the scene from the first episode of Star Trek Strange New Worlds. Now, when I first saw that, I was like, oh my god, the right-wing people are going to go on about this. Why did they have to do that? It's, it's, it's just going to it's just going to be such a big drama. And, of course, all the geeks and gamers and fandom menace and right-wing people on YouTube went crazy about it, um, just like I knew they would. Um, and this guy is basically doing the same thing. And what she was saying was... Well, he, he, he was basically saying that um, Star Trek used to look at both sides... So it was fair, and now it's just taking one side. And she was saying Star Trek was never centrist. Um, it was never centrist, it was always progressive. That's, that's kind of true. It was never really centrist because it always had a progressive story, but it was subtle about it. And it told it, as she said, through metaphor and allegory. Um, so you were able to watch it, and you could ignore the political, you know, the progressive message or maybe you wouldn't even see it, or wouldn't even read it. Some people would just watch Star Trek and not get that it was working on another level. And that's okay. I feel they're, they're, they're allowed to watch the show just as escapism. They don't have to engage in the, the progressive messages in the show. But they were there. So for the people saying that Star Trek was never political, they're not entirely right because it was never directly political. It was always like subvertly um, you know, progressive and that. And other people saying that it was always political, they're not really right, but they are because it wasn't directly political. Like I said, it was always sort of subversively putting this progressive message through and telling the story in a humanist way that even if it kind of, it would tell both sides of the story, even if it sort of went one way and said, well, this person's wrong, you still saw their side and understood them. So if you were identifying with the story, you at least were like heard on some level and you weren't vilified and alienated. You could sort of see, you know, the light, so to speak. Whereas instead of being told, you're wrong, just from one side, and that's sort of what Star Trek's doing now. And she admitted that. She basically said, well, yes, Star Trek now goes harder on these issues, and they should, because they're important. And she was saying how the original Star Trek, and this offended me a little bit, because I've met George and Michelle a couple of times, I love them both, and I think what they did was amazing. And she was basically saying, well, those characters were basically cast as set dressing. Their, their characters never really were involved in the story. Their personal politics, their, their, their issues dealing with race or whatever, were never directly involved in the story and their characters in the story. So they never really counted, is what she was sort of saying. I found that a bit offensive because just being there, they proved the point. Because had they directly addressed... Nichelle Nichols's race or George Takei's race on the show in the 21st century, it would have been ridiculous because we don't have those issues now. So to do that in today's Star Trek and have, say, trans actors playing trans characters and then talking about trans issues in the 31st century when it's no longer relevant, it's been dealt with decades, centuries ago, literally, doesn't make any sense. When, when a character is explaining to a, a, a trans character is explaining to a gay character what pronouns means they're not doing that. that that wouldn't really happen in the 31st century they're doing that for the audience today because you know they know they have a big part of the audience that that's their fight that's their issue and they want that to be addressed in the show um but that alienates other people so she kind of proved him right in that yes star trek has been changed they do now directly deal with politics rather than dealing it with solely through 
allegory and um, um, metaphors. Now, I know a few episodes of the original Star Trek did get fairly close to dealing with current day, you know, politics, but um, they still used an alien or a metaphor. They didn't directly show or deal with, you know, something. So it's kind of funny that she kind of proved his point, but, um, and, but her point was, but it should do that. And it didn't go far enough before, and he, she, she didn't think that um, Strange New Worlds went far enough this time. So I found that really fascinating. Um, because she was offended that you know some of this some of these these progressive messages were subtle enough that people could miss it and ignore it and she was saying you shouldn't be able to enjoy the show as escapism you should have to deal with the issues because those are our issues they're important we have to deal with them that's a very one-sided sort of um narcissistic this is important to me so it should be important to everybody sort of way to look at the show because I think the show was for everybody and you could view it as a progressive person and get a message and you could also view it as someone who likes escapism and you know not see any of that and I think you're allowed to do that. I don't I don't think I don't really agree with that being taken out of the show because I think it does hurt it because it does make it very much just for one type of person on that type of person so it doesn't offend me personally. And I like those messages getting a voice on some level, but I'm aware that now it's been cut off for a bunch of people who sometimes heard those messages. I have watched Star Trek with people who are racist and homophobic, and they got the message because it was put through without anything that personally alienated them or, you know, vilified them. And that opened minds. That was a good thing. And they've taken that out. And I don't think that's a good thing. Um, they may score points on the, on the left, but they're not gaining any allies on the right. So I, I think it's actually taken this great tool, which Star Trek was, for progressive issues, and made it um, a lot duller. Um, so, yeah, what are my other points? I think that's everything. Um, like, yeah, she said that the, 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 a lot of the messaging in the original Star Trek was cheap um, political points. It wasn't really deep. It didn't really go into the stories and so forth and the characters and all that. And, yeah, like I was saying, the original actors, had they dealt with those issues, today's issues, directly in the original Star Trek, it would, it would, it would have been ridiculous for the, the realism of the show, but also would look very dated now, whereas the more metaphorical stories last pretty much forever. So, yeah. So it's just kind of fascinating that um, she could only really see it from her point of view, and because the new show serves her point of view, she was like, yes, I think it should be like this and it should go even harder, like, because this is who I am. I'm a political act political activist and I think everything should be made for me. And this other person is saying, well, I like to stick my head in the sand because, you know, I basically have lived this life of white entitlement and I don't want it to end and I want to be able to stick my head in the sand. And it was just bizarre to see just two total sides of, of, of an issue talking about the same show and their interpretation of it, and how both sides are wrong about it. It was really fascinating. Um, because, yeah, like, Star Trek wasn't centrist, it was progressive, but it did it in a humanist way, dealing with allegory and metaphor, and that worked better, in my opinion. So that's what I wanted to say out of this video. Um, and I don't want to offend anyone, like, um, just Jesse Gender, her, her fans, or anyone, because I, I don't think she'll watch this video, because I don't think she thinks much of me. I've mentioned her a couple of times and I've messaged her a few times but I, I think because I'm not a hundred percent um on her side so much as I'm I'm not a activist or anything. Um I just I don't think I'm good enough to really speak to her. That's sort of the vibe you sort of get from those people that if you're not on their side a hundred percent, you're the other side. Like I've been told by the other side now because I like Strange New Worlds, I'm I'm not a Star Trek fan. And I've been told if I'm not fighting for like every minority um, in every way, then I'm, I'm like a right-wing person. It's like you can't win. Both sides are extremists. You have to be 100% them or you're nothing. You're the, you're the enemy. And they're both the same. Extreme left, extreme right, they're both exactly the same. They're two sides of the same coin and they can't see it. And if it weren't destroying lives, it'd be hilarious. But it is. So yeah, I just wanted to just point that out. And I just was fascinated. I was listening to her and she's like, going railing on all these points and then proving them all right but they're saying but that's how it should be <laughs> and on some level yeah it should but um i still think it could be done in a clever way 
that achieves both purposes, escapism, entertainment, and progressive messaging. I think it can be done. It was, or I think it was done properly before. I, I don't think the way Discovery and um, maybe now Strange New Worlds is doing it is the best way. Um, it is if you're left wing and you've got a cause, but if you're trying to speak to both sides and actually change minds, I don't think it's the best way to go about it. So that's it. I can't believe I talked for 10 minutes, but um, I think I got all my points through. I'm going to stop. F feel free to share, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think. And I say again, I like Jessie Gender. I'm not transphobic. Just because I disagree with her doesn't mean I disagree with who she is or her personal beliefs or politics. Um, yep. I'm going to go. Thanks. Bye.